Step back in time to a classic TV series that's been entertaining audiences for years. Join the adventures of a lively young boy named Dennis as he gets into all sorts of mischief. This show has stood the test of time, bringing laughter and joy to viewers of all ages. Now, let's dive into some fun facts and memorable moments. Share your own favorite memories and experiences with us in the comments below. Your input is valuable to us. In 1959, a mischievous young boy burst onto television screens, bringing humor and charm to audiences. The show centered around his playful antics in the suburban neighborhood of Elm Street. Created by cartoonist Hank Ketchum, the TV series was inspired by his comic strip. It swiftly became a cherished classic, connecting with viewers of all ages. Set in the post-war era, the show provided a peek into American family life during the 1950s. With its light-hearted humor and relatable situations, it became a hit. Sporting a trademark stripe shirt and always armed with a slingshot, the lovable troublemaker found himself in amusing predicaments. Alongside his patient parents, Henry and Alice Mitchell, and the grumpy neighbor, Mr. Wilson, he navigated the ups and downs of childhood with boundless energy and curiosity. The enduring popularity of this timeless classic lies in its universal themes of family, friendship, and the journey to adulthood. Even years after its original airings, the show continues to entertain and inspire audiences globally. Joseph Cairns and Herbert Anderson, portraying George Wilson and Henry Mitchell, were just 10 years apart in age. Cairns was 52, and Anderson was 42 when the series began. Jay North, known for his role in the series, visited convicted murderer Earl Clanton Jr. while he was on death row in 1988. Clanton had been involved in a prison escape in 1984, North's visit was reported in the New York Times. In an A. True Hollywood Story interview, North revealed struggles with the pressure of being a child protagonist and dealing with authoritarianism from his aunt, which affected him even after the show. He later found peace, appreciating the positive impact of the show on fans. In the glamorous days of Hollywood's past, there were some incredibly talented folks who left a lasting impression. For instance, Dub Taylor amazed audiences on The Tonight Show with his xylophone skills playing with six mallets at once. Edward Everhorton, famous for his TV roles, ran a theater in LA with his brother back in the 1920s. And let's not forget about Charles Lane's mom, Alice, who lived to the impressive age of 99, leaving behind a wealth of wisdom and grace. These stories show how these people added something special to Hollywood's history, something that still shines bright today. In the series, Walter Reed played the role of Jack Smith's younger brother. Mary Wicks, known for her performances at the St. Louis Little Theater from 1929 to 1934, portrayed various characters in different productions, including Louise in Allison's House, Maria Scott in Cock Robin, and Caroline in The Good Fairy. Ron Howard, recognized as the godfather of Max Winkler, also contributed to the show. His behind-the-scenes involvement added depth to the production. The connections between the cast and crew members added a layer of richness to the series, enhancing its appeal to audiences. In the series, Jay North's lineage traces back to two Civil War veterans. His great-great-grandfather, Judson North, served in the 22nd Michigan Voluntary Infantry Regiment. Another ancestor, John W. Cotton, enlisted in the 5th Texas Regiment. George Wilson refers to Alice Mitchell as Alice and Henry Mitchell as Mitchell. Ron Howard directed his younger brother Clint Howard in a total of 16 films. These include Night Shift, Splash, Cocoon, and Apollo 13. In the late 1960s, Walter Reed wrapped up his acting career and relocated to Santa Cruz, California, where he delved into real estate investment and brokerage. Meanwhile, Dub Taylor, a regular in director Sam Peckinpah's stock company, appeared in various films including Major Dundee, The Wild Bunch, and The Getaway. Mary Wicks, who volunteered with the Hospital Committee of the American Theater Wing War Service during World War II in New York, made notable contributions outside of her acting career. In the series, only the debut showcased him causing intentional mischief. Afterwards, his misadventures stemmed from earnestness, not misbehavior. Charles Lane, honored at the Tiveland Awards for his 100th birthday and long career, humorously remarked, in case anyone's interested, I'm still available. Edward Everett Horton starred in five culturally significant films listed in the National Film Registry. In the early days, Mary Wick spent her summers as a camp counselor near Eureka, Missouri. She loved the peaceful surroundings and often told stories around the campfire, unknowingly sparking her love for performing. In 1933, she stepped onto the stage with a mix of nerves and excitement. From small theaters to the streets of New York City, she worked hard to get better at acting. 
Every role she took on was like a new adventure, a chance to explore human emotions. Starting with plays like Reunion in Vienna and Another Language with the Arthur Casey Stock Company, she became well-known in the theater world. People praised her performances for being deep and real, pulling the audience in with every word and gesture. On the other side, Jay North got involved with a minor consideration, a group that helps child actors. Here he found friends who understood the challenges of being a young actor. In the glitzy world of Hollywood, he felt supported and understood by this community. Mary Wicks and Jay North made a lasting impact on audiences worldwide as their stories became part of show business history. Even though their experiences were different, they show how talent and determination can overcome challenges. Their stories continue to inspire new generations of performers. Gail Gordon, known for his roles in several sitcoms alongside Lucille Ball, made appearances in all four of her shows, with the exception of the first one, where he wasn't a regular cast member. Mary Wicks, who portrayed Mrs. Martha Wilson in the series, dedicated her time as a volunteer at the Hospital of the Good Samaritan in Los Angeles. Additionally, four episodes featured Harold Stevens Hopper, who played a significant role as the maternal uncle of Jay North, the actor behind the character Dennis. Hopper, along with his wife, acted as guardians to North during his time on the show. However, North has spoken openly about his negative experiences with them, alleging emotional and physical abuse when he failed to meet his aunt's high expectations. Dub Taylor, known for his role in the 1959 TV series, was the grandfather-in-law of Anne Lockhart. Interestingly, Jay North, who portrayed a mischievous child character in the series, took a different path in recent years. He served as a correctional officer and administrator, focusing on troubled youths within Florida's juvenile justice system. Mary Wicks, along with Kathy Najimy and Wendy McKenna, made an appearance in Lady Souls If My Sisters in Trouble music video, reprising their characters from Sister Act. These unexpected connections and diverse career paths highlight the multifaceted lives of the individuals associated with the series. In the world of movies, some big names stand out. One example is Ron Howard, a well-known figure in cinema. He really liked One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which was picked as the best in a poll by the American Film Institute. Then there's Dub Taylor, an actor who appeared in three movies made by Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale. These movies are 1941, Used Cars, and Back to the Future Part Roman 3. Lastly, Charles Lane, who is Tom Lane's father, played an important role in the series. All these people together have created a lot of memorable moments and characters in film history. Mary Wicks made an appearance on an episode of The Charlotte Peters Show in 1965, which aired locally in St. Louis Mo. The character role of Dennis Mitchell was ranked at number 8 in TV Guide's list of TV's 10 Biggest Brats, 46 years after the series began. Charles Lane, in a short PBS interview about movies, mentioned his regret about never getting to ride a horse in any of his performances. He stated he was an excellent horseman and had trained some Western actors how to ride. Throughout their careers, Charles Lane and Mary Wicks showcased their talents across various platforms. They worked together on stage and screen, leaving a lasting impression on audiences. Charles Lane notably appeared multiple times on a popular TV show in the 1960s, while Mary Wicks shared the stage with a young Montgomery Clift early in his career. Together, they demonstrated their versatility and skill in the entertainment industry, making a memorable mark on viewers. Gail Gordon, known for his role as Mayor Latrivia on the Fibber Magee and Molly Radio Show, was a beloved regular actor. Ron Howard, ranked 7 in VH1's 100 Greatest Kid Stars, showcased his talent early on. Billy Booth's sister Bonnie penned a tribute to him on DennisTVShow.com. These individuals contributed significantly to the series, each bringing their unique talent and charm to the screen. Edward Everett Horton interred at Forest Lawn, Glendale Ka, in the Whispering Pine section at the top of the hill. Charles Lane, in interviews later in life, said the best actor he ever worked with was Daisy Arnaz, with him saying Daisy was a fine actor. Edward Everett Horton's father had English and German ancestry, and his mother was born in Matanzas, Cuba, to Scottish parents. He was the eldest of four children. His family remained close throughout their lives. Edward's mother lived with him until she died at the age of 101. His brothers and sister also spent their later years residing at his Encino estate. In 1968, Mary Wicks became the first artist in residence at Washington University in St. Louis, Mo, collaborating with performing arts students for a month. Edward Everett Horton, known for his comedic talent, alongside Zazu Pitts, specialized in portraying fretful, woebegone characters. With their trademark phrase, oh dear, 
Ron Howard directed nine actors to Oscar-nominated performances, including Don Amici and Jennifer Connelly, who won Academy Awards for their roles in his films. Ron Howard, residing in the Sea Pines Resort on Hilton Head Island, SC, in January 2006, is known for his connection to the series. He is the father-in-law of Seth Gable. In 1977, Jay North enlisted in the Navy. A photograph exists of him taking the oath of enlistment, administered by fellow former child star Jackie Cooper. North served honorably until his discharge in 1979. Cooper, who later retired from the Navy Reserve, played a role in North's military journey. In the series after Joseph Kearns passed away unexpectedly during season three, the storyline addressed his absence by explaining that George Wilson had embarked on a trip to Ohio. During his absence, his brother John arrived to take care of the house and visit his sister-in-law, Martha Wilson. Additionally, Ron Howard, who played a role in the series, is known as the older brother of Clint Howard. Moreover, Mary Wicks, who portrayed a character in the series, was deeply involved in theater during her student years at Washington University. She participated in various clubs and organizations, including the Dramatic Society Thursis and the Quadrangle Club. Wicks also held leadership positions such as president of her sorority and treasurer of the Panhellenic Association. After graduating in 1930, she even secured a job as the university's assistant publicity director. In notable connections, Ron Howard starred in two films recognized by the National Film Registry, The Music Man and American Graffiti. Interestingly, none of his directorial works received this distinction. Furthermore, Mary Wicks delivered a lecture on comedy at the College of San Mateo in 1973. It's worth mentioning that Ron Howard portrayed Winthrop Paru in The Music Man and took on the titular role in Huckleberry Finn, both characters previously played by Eddie Hodges. These connections add depth to the legacy of the series. Isn't it fascinating how TV shows sometimes share the same sets? For instance, when Joseph Kearns passed away suddenly, Gail Gordon took over his role in a show seamlessly. Unfortunately, Gordon himself later lost his battle with cancer. The house where Dennis Mitchell's family lived was also used in other popular shows before. And the neighbor's house, where Mr. Wilson lived, was previously featured in Father Knows Best and I Dream of Jeannie. These houses were part of a neighborhood called Blondie Street, where many famous TV scenes were filmed. It's interesting to note that the movie Pleasantville recreated this entire block for its storyline. This shows how TV production often shares locations, creating a sense of connection among different shows. Isn't it fascinating how connections can span generations and blur our perceptions? Take, for instance, the actors behind Dennis the Menace. Joseph Kearns, who played Mr. George Wilson, was only a bit older than Jay North's real father, who portrayed Dennis's dad. And did you know that Ron Howard, the famous director, often worked with his dad, Rance Howard, on many films? They teamed up on 15 movies together, like Grand Theft Auto and Apollo 13. Ron even got a fancy award for his work in the arts. These connections show how family and work can mix in the movie biz. It's like a peek behind the curtain, showing the human side of our favorite stories. Pretty neat, huh? In a different setting, you may recognize a familiar tune. That's because a simplified version of the opening theme music from the 1959 TV series is also used in Hook, Line, and Stinker. Mary Wicks, known for her role in the series, had a notable career beyond the show. She appeared in the 1974 production of Juno and the Paycock in Los Angeles, working alongside Jack Lemmon, Walter Matthau, and Maureen Stapleton. Interestingly, she served as Stapleton's understudy during the production. Another actor from the series, Billy Booth, pursued higher education after his time on the show. He graduated from the University of Southern California in 1971, and later from the University of California, Hastings College of the Law in 1974. These actors had diverse paths beyond their roles in the show, showcasing their talents in various endeavors. Gail Gordon voiced the chief villain, the octopus, in the Speed Gibson weekly serial on radio during the late 1930s to the early 1940s. Edward Everett Horton, known for his companionship with actor Gavin Gordon, appeared alongside him in the movie Pocket Full of Miracles. Gloria Henry, a pert and pretty blonde leading co-star, transitioned from appearing in B-Westerns and crime dramas to portraying Jay North's squeaky clean mom on the sitcom. Their contributions enriched the show, adding depth to the character's dynamics. In different fields, several individuals have left their own unique impact. One person who served as inspiration for a character in a famous animated show contributed significantly to the animation industry. Another individual, known for directing well-received movies like A Beautiful Mind and Apollo 13 has made a lasting mark in the world of cinema. 
Additionally, a person with a diverse background in academics and achievements in both education and the arts has earned recognition for their various talents. These individuals have each made their mark in their respective fields, showcasing their diverse skills and contributions. Once the home stage of the Three Stooges, Soundstage 7 at Columbia Studios became the backdrop for the interior sets of the series. Edward Everett Horton, known for his role in Springtime for Henry, appeared in numerous revivals of the comedy play spanning several decades. He portrayed the character Henry Dulip over 3,000 times. Jeannie Russell was handpicked by Jane North for the role of Margaret Wade. Russell's portrayal brought depth to her character, adding to the dynamic of the show. It's interesting how these elements intertwine to create the beloved series. Ron Howard, a notable figure in the entertainment industry, displayed his passion for cricket by attending the final Ashes test match between England and Australia. This event occurred while he was filming The Da Vinci Code in 2005. During the match, he was observed interacting with players in the Australian dressing room. Mary Wicks, an accomplished actress, shared her knowledge and expertise by teaching a seminar at the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Bah, in 1981. Glory Henry is widely recognized for her role as Alice Mitchell in the beloved series. Her portrayal of Alice Mitchell in Dennis, The Menace remains a defining aspect of her career. In the UK, the series underwent a title change to Dennis to avoid confusion with the similarly named British comic strip. This adjustment was necessary to differentiate it from the local strip to prevent any mix-up among audiences. Interestingly, the British comic strip also found its way onto television, marking a parallel journey to the screen. Walter Reed, who happened to be the brother-in-law of Victoria Stewart, played a significant role in the series. When it came to choosing the director for I See You, Ron Howard was initially in consideration. However, he ultimately decided to helm How the Grinch Stole Christmas instead, opting for a different project. This decision stirred discussions within the industry about the potential direction of both films. Nonetheless, Howard's choice had its own ripple effects, impacting the trajectory of each production. These twists and turns in the entertainment world often shape the course of cinematic history. Amidst a group of talented actors in a famous TV series, there were individuals who made significant contributions in various ways. One of them survived the 96 San Francisco earthquake before bringing his experience to the screen. Another was honored by Santa Cruz in 2001 and showcased his talent in a Western film. Then there's the narrator of Fractured Fairy Tales, who also played diverse characters in another popular show. Each of these individuals enriched the series with their unique skills and presence. In another show, Mary Wicks, while filming Father Dowling Mysteries, volunteered at Denver General Hospital. Charles Lane, often recalled as Homer Bedlow from Petticoat Junction, was also part of the cast. Gail Gordon, whose father was a vaudevillian, contributed to the series as well. Each brought unique experiences to the set, enriching the production with their diverse backgrounds. It's fascinating how such varied talents converge to create the beloved show. Dub Taylor, a member of the 1937 Alabama Crimson Tide football team, showcased his talents beyond the field by transitioning into film. His role as Ed Carmichael and Frank Capra's You Can't Take It With You stemmed from his ability to play the xylophone. Edward Everett Horton, despite some misconceptions, was not the grandson of the author of The Man Without a Country, Edward Everett Hale. Mary Wicks portrayed a bus driving nun in two movie franchises The Trouble with Angels and Sister Act, showcasing her versatility across different roles and genres. Dub Taylor, Edward Everett Horton, and Mary Wicks contributed to the series with their unique talents and backgrounds, enriching the overall experience for viewers. One of the founders of the Television Academy, Charles Lane, received an honor at the Emmy Awards in 25, marking his 100th birthday as the oldest surviving member. The character Dennis Mitchell was based on Dennis Ketchum, son of animator Hank Ketchum, who created the comic strip. Despite the friendly demeanor of the character, the real Dennis faced hardship, losing his mother to a drug overdose at 12, moving to Switzerland with his father, and eventually struggling with PTSD after serving in Vietnam. Mary Wicks, known for her later roles, started her career in St. Louis Community Theater after high school. These individuals contributed to the series, each with their own unique story. Mary Wicks, born to Frank Wickenhauser and Isabella Shannon, came from a family deeply involved in various organizations. Isabella Shannon, an active figure in women's clubs, had ancestors notable in Illinois politics and law, including a lieutenant governor and a Supreme Court justice. Charles Lane, recognized for his role in It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, was considered essential for comedy, as noted by historian Michael Schlesinger. 
Edward Everett Horton initially pursued business, but found his calling in acting during his time at Columbia University, altering the course of his career. These actors contributed to the series' success, each bringing their unique talents to the screen. Ron Howard once thought about turning a British book that talks about abuse into a movie set in America. He believed the story's messages were important for everyone, and thought that changing the location might help more people understand it. But in the end, he felt keeping the story in its original place was better because it made the story feel more real. Mary Wicks played the role of Nurse Preen again in a TV adaptation of The Man Who Came to Dinner, years after she was famous for the same role on Broadway. Her performance brought joy and laughter to viewers, proving her ability to entertain people in both theater and television. Gail Gordon was part of the final movies of comedy legends Lou Costello and Lucille Ball. He built strong friendships with both Costello and Ball while working together, and he valued the time they spent on these projects. Gordon's work added more fun and laughter to the last movies of these well-loved comedians, ensuring that their impact on comedy would be remembered. In the world of television, several notable actors made their mark. Edward Everett Horton, known for his roles in various productions, including the Warner Brothers cartoon Hair Trigger, showcased his talent and versatility. Similarly, Charles Lane, often cast as a foil to Lucille Ball, shared a surprising friendship with her, stemming from their early days in RKO musicals. Despite his frequent portrayal as a counterpart to Lucy's scatterbrain character, they formed a genuine bond when they first met during her time as a chorus girl. On the other hand, Mary Wicks, recognized for her comic acting, took her expertise to new heights by teaching a seminar on the subject at the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco. These individuals brought depth and skill to their craft, enriching the entertainment landscape of their time. Back in 1999, Gail Gordon was honored by being added to the Radio Hall of Fame. Charles Lane was one of the first actors to become a part of the Screen Actors Guild. Dub Taylor, who was Buck Taylor's dad, acted alongside his son in a movie called Kenogger back in 1991. These talented folks all played roles in the 1959 TV series Dennis the Menace, bringing their own unique skills to the show. Their contributions really made a mark on the entertainment world. In the 1959 TV series, Dennis the Menace, several notable actors made appearances. Tommy Bond, a regular on Edward Everett Horton's radio show in the 1930s, brought his talent to the screen. Charles Lane, who had a long history in stage acting since the late 1920s, was also part of the cast. He was even a founding member of SAG at its first public meeting in 1933. Mary Wicks, known for her roles alongside Doris Day in various films, also guest starred in the series. She appeared in four movies with Day and even made an appearance on the first season of Day's own TV show. The series featured a talented ensemble, including these seasoned performers, contributing to its charm and enduring appeal. Charles Lane, a seasoned actor, showcased his talent in various roles throughout his career. Notably, he starred alongside John Barrymore in Howard Hawks' 20th Century and faced off against Lionel Barrymore in Frank Capra's You Can't Take It With You. Later, Lane reunited with Lionel in It's a Wonderful Life, playing the rent collector to mean Mr. Potter. Ron Howard, known for his acting and directing, celebrated becoming a grandfather when his daughter Bryce Dallas Howard welcomed a baby boy in 27. Mary Wicks, recognized for her role as Nurse Preen and the Man Who Came to Dinner, portrayed the character across different mediums, including the original Broadway production, the movie adaptation, a television series, and a Hallmark Hall of Fame production. These actors each contributed their talents to various projects, leaving a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. In the world of television history, a timeless classic continues to hold a special place in the hearts of audiences across generations. The actors and crew behind the scenes, connected by shared experiences, have forged lasting bonds that go beyond the realm of showbiz. One cast member, Jay North, remains close with his co-star Jeannie Russell, who portrayed Margaret on the show. Over the years, their friendship has only grown stronger, rooted in the camaraderie they developed on set. In 2008, Jeannie found her calling in chiropractic care, establishing her practice in North Hollywood Ca. Interestingly, Jay North became one of her clients, further solidifying their connection outside the world of entertainment. Another familiar face, Ron Howard, showcased his talents both in front of and behind the camera. After appearing alongside Kathleen Quinlan in American Graffiti, Ron seamlessly transitioned to directing. Their professional collaboration continued when he directed her in the acclaimed film Apollo 13, demonstrating Ron's ability to navigate different roles in the film industry with finesse. As for Gloria Henry, life took a different turn after her time on the show. 
Alongside her ex-husband, Craig Elwood, she embraced the fulfilling journey of parenthood, raising two sons, Jeffrey and Adam, along with a daughter named Erin. Their family dynamic, though not without challenges, was marked by love, resilience, and a shared commitment to nurturing their children's growth and well-being. The enduring charm of the classic TV show is a testament to the talent and dedication of its cast and crew, whose connections and experiences continue to resonate with viewers decades later. In the world of entertainment, there are some actors who leave a lasting impression. Take Mary Wicks, for example. She's best known for playing Nurse Preen in a famous movie and Miss Cathcart in a popular TV series. But did you know she also served as the model for a character in a classic animated film? Alongside Wicks, Edward Everett Horton, known for his role in another movie, played a character twice. They even worked together in a beloved TV show where they brought laughter and charm to the screen. Their performances were loved by many and still are today. Their work in entertainment continues to be celebrated by people all over the world. 